talk a bit about concerns regarding privacy and surveillance in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. Many commentators have pointed out to the intrusive surveillance techniques being used by governments in trying to prevent the spread of coronavirus. Specifically, they have pointed to the use of these techniques in countries like China and East Asian countries like South Korea, Singapore, and Taiwan. Some have even made the argument that some of these governments have been able to do uh, such intrusive surveillance because they happen to be authoritarian. In India, the central government has recently launched a contact tracing app named Arogya Setu that has already been downloaded 10 million times. But at the same time, concerns have been raised about its data sharing and storage practices. Many other countries have launched similar apps or are in the process of doing so. These apps track and collect the location data of individuals and who they have, into, who they have come into contact with. If such a person eventually tests positive for the virus, governments can trace everyone else who has come into contact with this person and test them as well. Now, many are concerned that the use of these techniques for tracking the transmission of COVID-19 will lead to a new kind of surveillance state and that individual privacy as we knew before this pandemic will be completely different once the pandemic is over. In this video, I wish to explore how real this concern is. So how do we try to understand whether the techniques being used right now will create this new Orwellian state of perpetual surveillance? While I do not have a clear yes or no answer, let me put forward two or three questions we can ask to understand this issue better. The first question we should ask is whether this pandemic has led to a drastic increase in government powers in any country. Historically, governments have passed new laws to give themselves more powers to fight crises. Once the crisis is over, these laws or powers tend to remain in the law books, and then this leads to a permanent increase in government power. One such example is the powers governments have given themselves historically to control prices of essential commodities. The US did it during the Great Depression and World War II, and some parts of such powers lingered on for decades in the US law books. And this was well after both the Great Depression and the World War had obviously ended. In India, the British passed wartime regulations during World War II, and in 1990, uh, 1955, sorry, these were succeeded by the Essential Commodities Act, well after the war was over and India was no longer ruled by the British. Governments in India continue to use this law even today to control the prices of essential commodities even when there is no emergency. In the present case, we have seen many governments use intrusive techniques of surveillance to fight COVID-19. But most, if not all of these techniques have been deployed using the powers governments already have. For example, China has a history of weak privacy protection and extensive surveillance since before this pandemic started. To the best of our knowledge, the Chinese governments, both the national government and local governments, did not need additional powers to do the kind of surveillance they have done during this pandemic. Similarly, in India, the Epidemic Diseases Act of 1897 gives very broad powers to state governments, including the power to conduct surveillance to prevent the spread of epidemics. In the EU, the general data protection regulations permit anonymized tracking for disease control, and they also permit member states of the EU to pass legislation for tracking individual cell phone locations. So new powers have not really been needed to use the technology that exists today. The UK did pass a law enabling individual cell phone tracking for the purpose of fighting COVID-19, but so far this has been an exception rather than a rule. And of course, things could change in the future, and governments could very well make a case for expanding the legal powers, but it hasn't happened yet. Uh, the second question is whether governments have used this pandemic as an excuse to increase their surveillance in other parts of our lives. In other words, has there been a creeping but significant increase in surveillance of activities that are not really related to disease control? Here, the answer is a little more difficult. Many countries have developed contact tracing apps like Arogya Setu. However, some of them have been criticized on the grounds that they have not 
adequately protected individual data or disclosed how this data will be shared with other government agencies or even private entities so in india this has been criticized on the ground that the policy does not limit the government's power to use the data collected even once the emergency is over the other point the other perspective on this is that so far the use of these techniques has not been used widely they have been very narrowly directed towards fighting covid-19 and while the concerns about misuse continue to exist we have not yet seen large scale diversion of data for other purposes or an intent to deploy these techniques for purposes other than disease surveillance and this is also not the same thing as governments increasing the actual scope of their surveillance powers again it is important to note that we should remain alert regarding attempts to change this in the future and even now governments should be doing more to build in technical and contractual safeguards to ensure that the data is not misused a third question is whether surveillance tools have been critically important in fighting covid-19 or have they been deployed under false pretenses here it is important to note that surveillance using smartphones and other kinds of data analysis is one part of fighting this pandemic but they have enabled countries that have used them well to precisely and accurately identify the transmission of the virus and help them flatten the curve of transmission additionally not all countries have used these same techniques for disease surveillance so while the indian government has launched this app for contact tracing its actual capability for fighting the pandemic are very different from say singapore taiwan or south korea and each of these countries have used smartphone technologies and other technologies depending on their own systems for maximum effectiveness in some of these countries technology has played a much more important role in fighting covid-19 but this is also because their systems were designed to take advantage of existing technology and now many other countries are learning from east asian countries but it will take them a while for them to completely reorient their capabilities and use the same surveillance mechanisms in a manner that some of these east asian economies have done and to go back to our first point a lot of these countries will also need to change their existing legal frameworks to enable these technologies to be used and this is mainly because the current legal frameworks in a lot of western democracies are not amenable to the same kind of surveillance that was seen in uh, countries like china and south korea but on the whole these surveillance mechanisms have actually been used narrowly for fighting covid-19 second countries who had existing capabilities to use these technologies have been able to use them pretty effectively for the actual purpose of fighting the pandemic so if you try and answer these three questions we see no clear evidence that these techniques already indicate the start of a new kind of totalitarian surveillance state if anything it highlights the amount of power governments already have under existing laws technological innovation has made it possible for governments to do surveillance more accurately and therefore more intrusively but governments have not needed to expand their powers to use these technologies like i said before all of this could change in the coming weeks or months but so far it seems a little too early to definitively claim that a new kind of surveillance state is in the offing and lastly before i end i leave you with a question for you to think about governments have imposed severe restrictions on our fundamental freedoms in order to fight covid-19 people can't run businesses go to their offices or even step out of the house and most people around the world have accepted these restrictions with very little protest then why are we so worried about the loss of our privacy can any of us claim that privacy is more important than other aspects of human autonomy and freedom and if so what is the basis or objective criteria on which we can make that claim are we prioritizing privacy too much or are we not prioritizing our other freedoms enough i don't have a clear answer but if you do please feel free to respond with a comment thank you for listening and stay safe